She was in the blast. Wind and rain tore at her. Wind ripped through her jacket, her hair, her skin, her mouth. A monstrous fury. Was this the worst? The edge of the hugest hurricane ever to pound up the coast? She was nothing to it. Wind would carry her away. But there was someone else, a boy, a young man, trying to pull himself up the steps to her house. She had to help. She reached out. There was a tug on her hood, her shoulder, an immense strength wrenching her back as she struggled forward, pulling her into the house while the rain bit her face. Her father. There was ferocity in him, her stern protector. Get inside. He'd thrown on his rain jacket, a rope wrapped round his waist. I'll hold on to the rope, Miranda said, giddy and reeling. They were both in the doorway. Wind and rain swept into the room behind them. No, you won't, her father said. Tie the rope to the bottom banister. The house would be his counterweight. In the first hurricane ever to brush the island, Hurricane Jose, he'd struggled outside in the middle of the night to close the door of their store shed and been caught, swept off his feet, forced to crawl back to the house, inch his way back. Eleven then, Miranda had slept through all of it. He told her the story the next morning, leaving Miranda with nothing but bolts of panic and remorse. Without knowing it, she'd almost lost him, the only parent she had left. After that, Alan had strung up ropes between their outbuildings whenever high winds and storms were brewing. Now, soaked to the skin, she stumbled back through the kitchen, ordinary and warm, cards and mugs still on the table. Miranda's heart surged into the storm again, to the stranger. Breathless, she tugged the rope around the banister as tight as she could, with a knot her father had taught her. When the rope went taut, it caught the leg of a kitchen chair and toppled it, pitched the table up against the wall. In the mudroom, her father was a silhouette beyond the door, wind pouring into the house, rain like savage stars all around him. Braced against the railing, he lowered himself to reach the stranger. Everything in the room rippled and shook. The empty egg basket took flight. Miranda almost tripped over the rope. Her father hauled the stranger up the steps as the wind screamed. On his hands and knees, the young man was close enough that she could extend a hand to him once more, she and her father working together. The stranger's hand, cold and wet, grasped Miranda's. While her father grabbed his jacket, she pulled him in, battling the wind for him, dragging him over the lintel. He whispered something as he collapsed to the floor.